Another death related to coronavirus in the county as the number of those confirmed infected continues to climb. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Steve Price and I'm Alicia Summers. Let's get you caught up on the latest numbers today. County leaders announced 97 new confirmed cases of COVID-19, bringing the total to 1,209, but they believe the true number of those infected in the community is much higher. That one death, a man in his 70s is the 18th in the county. And the effort to ramp up testing continues as more than 1,000 tests were completed in the last 24 hours, bringing the total to almost 17,000 countywide. Officials also said it's important for those of you to keep a couple of things in mind when you protect yourself and family during this very tough time. While this crisis has brought us together and stronger than ever, it also has provided an opportunity for greedy people and those who want to take advantage of vulnerabilities, vulnerabilities based on fear. We see more charity scams. We see fake cures for the coronavirus. Our office and our tip line has fielded over 240 tips of different claims of price gouging, and we've served no notice to cease and desist on 24 businesses, most of whom immediately complied. It is important to note that if you have serious health issues uh, unrelated to coronavirus, and they are serious in nature, that our hospitals remain open, um, and it is okay to go uh, if you are experiencing a serious complication or challenge, uh, or a uh, medical situation that you do not believe you can endure through on your own. When individuals go to the hospital, either by ambulance or by self-transport, our hospital partners are asking us to remind you to please, please bring your medications, especially inhalers, with you to the hospital. This is a very important um, time that we are in, and we thank everyone that's helping to do what's needed to help save lives. And with government stimulus checks coming in, county leaders also want to warn about scams to get your personal information. They want to remind you that the IRS will never call you and ask for personal information before sending you your money. Alicia. All right, Steve, a full beach closure now in effect in Oceanside to enforce the San Diego County Public Health order to follow social distancing. It had previously been one of the few beaches still open for activities. The order went to, into effect at midnight. News 8's Teresa Sardina has more from Oceanside with community reaction. Residents tell us it is quite different here Saturday morning. They woke up coming down here thinking they could go for a walk, but they see signs, sidewalk closed. We have barricades here only open for residents. And just as yesterday, they were able to come out here and walk, even go surf. But we spoke with law enforcement and they tell us that people must comply with these safety orders. Walk on the beach today because as of uh, yesterday, we were able to. So it's uh, my wife's birthday today, so she wanted to come down and go take a walk. And then we found out as of midnight, they, they stopped all that. I live about seven miles from here and I'm extremely disappointed that I can't come down. It was two weeks ago when beach goers got the news that beaches were closing along the San Diego coastline. I kind of thought Oceanside was doing a great thing by allowing us to come down here. Oceanside and Coronado were the last to put a full beach closure in place. Over the past couple weeks, our deputies have gone out on foot and provided physical copies of the public health order as well as the executive order to educate our community members. A step to protect the county from the spread of coronavirus. County leaders tell News 8 they're pleased to see people complying with the order. The first social distancing order the CDC recommended against gatherings of 50 or more people. Many continued to gather and now that number is 10 plus keeping a six feet distance from others. Now we've gotten to the point that we've had to escalate and now we're doing enforcement. A large group of our deputies and detectives did go out and conduct enforcement for those who are violating the order. These were not recommendations that came down. These were actual orders that our deputies have gotten to the point now to where we will, we will enforce and we're gonna continue to be doing enforcement. Violators can expect fines up to $1,000 and up to six months in jail, depending on the action.
And many are wondering when the beaches will reopen. That is undetermined at this time, but we will keep you updated at CBS8.com. In the meantime, stay safe, be patient, and respect the closures here along the coastline of San Diego. I'll send it back to you. Good news for San Diegans in search of farm fresh food. Farmers markets are coming back, including today in Little Italy. All right, make sure you're maintaining that six foot social distancing. Don't touch any product. Yeah, but you have to stay six feet apart. San Diego markets, which operates the Little Italy Mercado at and the Tuesday afternoon market in Pacific Beach says they're now using a reservation system and staggering entry times to accommodate shoppers. There are fewer vendors and produce is prepackaged and pre-priced to keep food sanitary. Market permits are being reinstated. Check the San Diego County Farm Bureau website and your local markets Facebook pages to see when they will reopen. San Diego County is requiring employees who regularly interact with the public to wear face coverings. Now, this is all an effort to slow the spread of coronavirus. News 8's Angie Lee has more on when are the best times to head out to the store, and she has some safety advice during the COVID-19 pandemic. Feeding your family is vital, so here are some simple tips to safely go grocery shopping without putting your health and the health of others at risk. So before you even get in the store, make sure you have a list, a little grocery list, maybe on a piece of paper or write it in your phone. That way, when you're in the store, your time is used efficiently. In these times right now, come get what you need and then and then get out of the store. Dave Hyland with the California Grocers Association. We're in a different situation now. We need to try to limit the number of individuals in the store. Experts say also when you're heading to the store, come alone. I know it's hard, but leave the loved ones at home. That way, no one else is exposed. And there are actually some counties that are beginning to mandate that only one individual from a family or a couple or whatever the scenario is, is, the, is the shopper. We noticed today a lot of shoppers wearing masks going in and out of the store. One simple way to make sure you're practicing social distancing is simply by using your shopping cart. This shopping cart measures just over three feet. So double that and there's your six feet of social distancing. And when it comes to touching the food you're about to buy, we're really asking to look and don't touch. And, and really that goes beyond the produce section. Another great tip is using these produce bags. Use it almost like a glove. Pretend this is a piece of produce, grab it with the bag, flip it inside out, and there you go. So when is the best time to head to the store? Maybe try going a little later in the afternoon or, or uh, you know, earlier, maybe mid-afternoon, you know, times that they're not usually accustomed to going to. Keep in mind, your one visit to the grocery store should last you about a week's worth of groceries. Dave says if you're shopping at a store that allows you to bring your reusable bags, make sure these get thrown in the wash before every trip to the grocery store. And finally, don't forget the most important step. Once the groceries are in the car, make sure you use a quick hand sanitizer or even a wipey to wipe things down. That way you have a clean, safe start as you head back home. Back to you. All right, good advice. The weekly drive through food events at SDCCU Stadium keeps growing. Today, Feeding San Diego and the local Labor Council distributed emergency supplies to 1,500 families and seniors in need. That's 500 more than last week and 1,000 more than the first event two weeks ago. Hundreds of union teachers, nurses, and construction workers volunteered to make it happen while keeping everyone safe. Each one of our guys has been trained. All of our guys are wearing masks, safety gear. They're all wearing their PPE, which is the gloves, you know, bandanas. There are also hundreds of food distribution sites across the county. Visit feedingsandiego.org for locations.